I, one of the early concerns when you start something that's effectively a five-year program was, do people really believe they can achieve it, or will we respond and deliver performance in the way we, we plan to? And I guess we had two early examples, one good and one uh, where, we, where effectively, initially, there was a failure on site. Uh, but actually, both demonstrated what could be achieved ultimately. Um, early in the program, our first winter, winter 2002, uh, we came out of that winter in early 2003. March 2003, we were 14 weeks behind a critical path because we'd had the wettest October and November in 2002, almost our second wettest in history. Now, we were 14 weeks behind a critical path to have to deliver a key milestone in October, in fact, the 27th of October 2003, between the substructure team and the roof team. So literally six months to catch up 14 weeks. And they actually achieved that milestone. And they achieved it through genuine collaboration because they weren't inhibited by the commercial constraints that you'd normally get. So that was an early demonstration of how true collaboration could work and against all business norms or business planning assumptions uh, of how, how they could be overcome. In October 2003, we were faced with our first, uh, what I would call first biggest challenge as a client, where we had a major part of the project, the control tower, uh, hit a failure where they had to stop the job. We had a major uh, uh, construction failure as a consequence of not being able to meet the design tolerances uh, in the mass section of the control tower. Now the project stopped, and interestingly the behaviours of all the suppliers was to go to ground for two weeks, wait almost building up the defence to almost blame each other that it wasn't their fault for, for the failure. Uh, and I guess it was a test of our behaviours as a client, uh, not falling into the trap of wanting to blame somebody straight away. And actually, because we got this insurance policy that underpinned the financial consequences of risk, and that it was taken out on a strictly no-fault basis, that actually I could reassure at one level the suppliers that the insurance policy would deal with the financial consequences. What we had to deal with, though, were the root causes of why that project had failed in the first place. And again, it came back to they weren't communicating with each other, they weren't behaving properly, they weren't sharing information in the right way and managing those critical dependencies. So, of course, that failure exposed a lot of those, those uh, sort of inefficiencies. But of course, when they realized that we weren't going to beat them up and push them into a corner and slap them with a major claim, then actually they, 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 the team recovered. And if any, as it happened, we handed over that control tower to NATS, the air traffic controllers, uh, three months earlier than the, the original program. Now, after the event, uh, the, all the suppliers said without fail that had we been in a conventional or traditional environment, then we would probably spent 12 months arguing about it through a litigious process, and then, because the team would have disbanded, we'd have probably spent another 12 months remobilizing the team and trying to find a new design solution. All that would have meant that the control tower wouldn't have been ready until 2009, a year after Terminal 5 is meant to open. Now, a small part of the project like that, T5 does not open without the new control tower. So we had an early example there of a failure that actually served to our advantage to actually demonstrate the constructive behaviors we were looking for in the project.